Good day, good day, everyone. Today we have an interesting subject today. We are continuing our law series here on The Bible Explained. The question is, how to buy a home without traditional financing and without a down payment? Now, why would someone want to do this? Well, for one, you avoid personally guaranteeing debt, which can risk your marriage or business relationships by attaching a financial liability as surety for someone else's assets, all to have a house. It's simply not worth it. You can buy all the houses you want with no credit, no cash down payments by simply understanding how to negotiate and structure a win-win for both merchants. Now, I have some notes here and I want to read them and you can follow along. This ties into our tax exemption series, which is available on my Patreon page. If you'd like to navigate that, please see the link in the description and start watching the videos with the templates so you can receive your determination letter from the IRS stating you no longer have to file 1040s or 1041 tax returns. And this is why the lesson in this video is so important because it's customary that tax returns are used to obtain public loans for personal and business endeavors. But there is another way. And if we use it correctly, we can change the overall economic health towards insurance, inflation, and avoid market volatility. So with that being said, let's get into it. Okay, how to buy a home without traditional financing and without a down payment. Now I've broken this down into a couple of steps as well as we're gonna go over what actually happens when you purchase a house on the commercial level or getting a federal backed loan. Okay, so step one. First thing you're going to do is search for the for sale by owner homes in any neighborhood that you want to live in and find homes that are not occupied, meaning the seller does not live there. And this is highly important because the seller does not need any of the equity from the proceeds of the sale of the house in order to move on to the next house. So let's go to Zillow and see if we can find our example house. All right, so I'm going to take, for example, Orange County, Florida. I'm going to go to For Sale, bring down the drop down menu, and only select By Owner. You have the option to select houses, townhomes, multifamily, and condos. Uh, choose whatever you like. Stay away from the lots or apartments. Anything that has multiple units on them is a good idea. And I'll show you that as we go along but if you wanted to just choose houses for now you can do that okay so let's scroll down and we look through mm, let's choose this one here it's been on the market for about two days this is one two three two Creek bottom circle for three hundred and forty five thousand three bid three bath fourteen hundred square feet and it looks nice and after we've done our research in the area what we would do is contact the property owner and this is their phone number okay what you would do is contact this owner and begin to have a conversation so what does that look like before I get into the steps on how to do that let's talk about the opposition Normally, we would go to a national association after dealing with an agent so that we can get qualified to finance the house. This is what we normally do. The national association 
that is a Federal Reserve Bank participant such as Chase or Bank of America, etc. And we would fill out a mortgage application. Most people do not realize the real process that takes place behind the scenes. And very similar to the other contracts such as passports, applications or SS5s uh, for the social security application, driver's license applications or voter registrations, the mortgage applications further solidifies the forfeiture of our true nationality and we would become subject to the infamous thereof. And what is that? The infamous thereof is the 14th Amendment where you are a person born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. And the jurisdiction thereof, which is the District of Columbia as their U.S. citizen subcorporate chattel. Now, in our tax exemption process, we want to abstain from this selection at all times. The way we do that is not by personally guaranteeing debt using old age insurance securitization or social security numbers but by going back to the ways of the old republic and that's the ways of the law of the merchant and that's creating or introducing creative financing now we will eventually get into utilizing promissory notes and bonds to draw funds from vehicles such as whole life insurance policies or laser funds but for now let's focus on what truly happens when applying for a mortgage followed by case law supporting the fact that no money is given from the bank's liquid cash to the seller on behalf of the buyer so when you go to the bank in person or online you filled out some paperwork and one of the documents you sign is the mortgage which was notarized and recorded with the Registrar of Deeds in the county and the other document is a promissory note which represents a promise to repay a certain amount amortized over 10 to 30 years and this document is not notarized and that is like signing a blank check in other words you signed a negotiable instrument which is why in the first couple of years of owning the house, you receive several notices through MERS that the holder of the note changed from one bank to another. Now they are taking your negotiable instrument and selling a $300,000 face value note for $220,000 for example. The seller would rather have cash today rather than cash tomorrow because who knows if you are going to lose your job or main source of income in the next couple of years you would become a risk and no bank is in the business of holding real estate owned property now when you sign that promissory note you thought the bank was going to give you four hundred thousand dollars for example well when you sign the note what did they give you absolutely nothing that note became an asset for that bank which they owned then they took that asset and created a bond in the same sense you would bail a family member out of jail and the bond goes to the Federal Reserve through what's called the Treasury window by the comptroller of currency and the Fed gives the bank 10 times the amount of the note in credit which in this example comes to about four million now how much exactly did the bank put up to get four million again absolutely nothing they leveraged or monetized your promise to pay to create four million which they still kept your promise to pay which is the four hundred thousand dollars in addition to bringing the note to the fed they also brought the note to another party who is a wholesaler or aggregator or trustee and that wholesaler then sells the note to a trust 95% of the trust are in New York which means Wall Street the question to ask is 
where did the money actually come from? It would seem like the Federal Reserve, but not quite. When the Federal Reserve writes a check, it is creating money on an account with nothing in it, and their checks are bound to bounce all the time. Before you even applied for the mortgage, the trust in New York filed what's called an AK filing with the Security and Exchange Commission, and the trust explained to the SEC that they were going to sell investment securities or collateralized debt obligations, and your note was the security to intrigue investors to become certificate holders of your note. It was already set up and waiting for your social security number and your signature so the note could be sold to the trust. Now let's say we have a particular community in Los Angeles, California. A group of investors that represents the firefighters pension plan. And each of them invested 10 million into this trust that was backed by your promise to pay. The investors are given 8% return on their investment and you were paying 10%. So the trust was earning a profit. Now, those certificates that were purchased by the investors went back to the bank where you signed the promise to pay and that's how the funds are actually derived to pay the seller at the closing table. So that simple note that was never notarized, it traveled around the face of the earth gathering money. It created four million in bank credit upon your signature. It also intrigued several pension plan investors to invest into a trust, receiving a trust certificate, and those funds were routed back to the bank. This happens because a national bank cannot lend its credit to another by becoming surety, endorser, or guarantor for him, such an act being ultra buyers, that is Merchants Bank versus Bard F642. You can look up that case law. So all of this sounds good. Sounds like a good deal for the bank, right? Well, let's move on. Now the trustee for the trust provides what's called a pooling and services agreement, which are his rules to abide by with the SEC. In that agreement, it states the trust has entered into an insurance contract in case you fail to pay your mortgage according to the promissory note. But the money would not go to you. It would go to the trust, which is called a credit default swap. And the insurance company is most likely Sedgwick, Zurich, or AIG. If you lost your job, and you try to contact the bank in hopes of preventing foreclosure, most assuredly, you would get the runaround. You'd have to file this document and that document and speak to this person on this day, or you have to submit the paperwork again because they lost them, etc., etc. But you will be told we can't help you until you are 90 days late. And this is by design because on day 91, the insurance policy that the trustee entered into with AIG or Zurich, it triggered a payoff and the trust received the full amount of the note, regardless of how much you already paid on the mortgage. So the mystery is the Federal Reserve. They allowed the trust to leverage the $400,000 note not just 10 times but 30 times and that has created 30 different levels so going back to the default Zurich or AIG paid off the note when it was 91 days late so the mystery is that at this point who has lost any money nobody except Sedgwick Zurich or AIG or insurers like them but here's the kicker. The alleged lender or the trust, they will attempt to foreclose on you 
and nobody has any real skin in the game. No actual valuable consideration has been given. And it was your note, your signature on a blank check that created the money while requiring you to repay what you already created. Everyone has been paid commissions and they are very successful at stealing houses through wrongful foreclosure. And the only real players in this game are those that have enough money to hire an attorney who knows what to do and he can only represent artificial persons on title to the house. He cannot represent a real natural person such as an express trust because the attorney owes allegiance to the bar, which is the city of London, and therefore that is the crown. And that goes back to the Sestuque v. Act of 1666, where everybody's estate is abandoned and held in trust, waiting for the right owner to claim their property. Now, only a natural person can claim it. And right now, as an artificial person, being one that is surety for a debt because you provided that social security number and your signature, you would need legal representation to even make an attempt to reclaim your property. And that's any property. So what is the attorney doing? Well, he's delaying the process. And at best, he's buying you time to save a couple months rent. And at the end of the procedure, the attorney gets a dismissal without prejudice, which means the alleged lender who doesn't have any skin in the game can come back in a month's time and reattempt the foreclosure process while you have exhausted the funds to hire another attorney. Now, everyone who has experience with a mortgage is familiar with MERS, which stands for Mortgage Electronic Registration Systems, who was formed by the banks and became members. At the closing table, MERS is named the nominee lender who takes possession of the mortgage electronically not via hard copy by being the nominee lender and having possession electronically they believed the note followed the mortgage however the u.s supreme court of 1872 said the note and mortgage are inseparable because one secures the other but if they are separated then they are both null and void. Now MERS took possession of the mortgage, but they could not take possession of the note because the Kansas Supreme Court ruled they are not a lender. With that being said, your loan was bifurcated at the closing, which means the chain of title was broken. And this leads us to the proper setup of the express trust that we're learning inside of the Patreon courses. It has a non-resident alien as the sole trustee, and that person can operate as the foreign fiduciary to request to the court a securitization audit report, which follows the paper trail from the time you as the settler closed escrow until it enters into the trust. And that's what intrigued investors. And it's accompanied with an affidavit under penalty of perjury. Now, once this is received, the express trust has admissible evidence that the note was paid off when the insurance or credit default swap was triggered in the rules of Title 55 of South Dakota for mortgage release can be granted. Now, if you are current on the mortgage, and want to eliminate the obligation via the express trust and utilizing the laws of South Dakota, your foreign fiduciary would open a suit against MERS and the loan servicer enforcing the Kansas and U.S. Supreme Court case law, making them produce the hard copy note and the mortgage, to which they cannot do because it has been sold all around the world as we previously discussed. 
So when the express trust is registered in the county where the property is located and in South Dakota for a minimum of two years, then the suit can begin. Now, during the course of the two years, the express trust will stay in honor by paying month by month accord and satisfaction payments so that when the mortgage release is granted, all of the prior house payments will be refunded to the express trust by court order. And they know this, and this is how they entice you to make convenient payments via debit card or credit card or online ACH payments because it's fast, it's quick. You can do it from your mobile phone, your tablet, from the comfort of your own home. However, that does not give you the evidence of payments to come back because accord and satisfaction is only done by a draft. That's a check or money order, which allows you to add specific information or specific language on the check or money order, such as a restrictive endorsement. And it's a form of a new contract. If they cash the check and money order without refunding it within or let's say after 90 days of cashing it, the entire obligation is complete. And so most likely they will not close the obligation. You would have to take it to court, use South Dakota's laws, and then you can go back and show the proof of all the payments that you've submitted via draft. And all of those payments can come back. So this is why the Express Trust will stay in honor paying accord and satisfaction payments so that when the mortgage is released, those payments can come back uh, via court order. Now, when the securitization audit report is received, you will see that the only entity with a logical claim to the house would be the insurance company when they paid off the claim, except for the fact that they have insured unsecured notes at the closing table. Remember, at the closing, MERS became the nominee lender and took possession of the mortgage only and not the note. So AIG, Zurich, or other insurers like them insured unsecured notes because the note or a certified true copy under penalty of perjury was not accompanied with the mortgage. And therefore, they had no claim on the house. This is the argument and special request your foreign trustee will ask in the form of a bill of complaint in either a court of equity or a court of chancery. It depends on your state. Using one of the best discretionary trust state laws such as South Dakota. So let's take a look at South Dakota uh, Title 55. And there are other states such as Delaware, Alaska, Georgia, uh, Wyoming. There's about 17 of them. Now you want to look at the powers of foreign fiduciaries. And here it is, 55 5A-1, release of judgments or mortgages by foreign fiduciaries. This is the law that you would raise. So even if your property is located in California, any other state outside of South Dakota, you can still file the suit in South Dakota to release a mortgage on a property that's in another state. So it says release of judgments or mortgages by foreign fiduciaries, deeds to carry out real estate contracts, court approval not required, judgments rendered by any court in the state of South Dakota, and mortgages belonging to an estate trust or person under conservatorship may without prior order of court be released discharged or assigned in whole or in part as to any particular property and deeds may be executed in performance of real estate contracts entered into before the creation of the estate trust or conservatorship by any foreign fiduciary receiver referee or by any other person acting in a fiduciary capacity appointed by a court of record of any foreign state or country. If no fiduciary 
receiver or referee has been appointed and qualified in the state such release satisfaction discharge assignment or deed may be made without any order of court in any manner and by any instrument which would be valid and effective if made by or like officer qualified under the laws of this state this is how you would start the bill of complaint against the loan servicer or the mortgage company okay so if you have already personally guaranteed debt then you definitely want to set up the foreign express trust so you can discharge the mortgage and you're gonna have to do a quick claim deed from your name your spouse name or uh, any LLC's name or corporation name because all of those are considered artificial persons you want to quick claim it over to the express trust and let it sit there for a minimum of two years before you enter this suit okay so you want to do the discharge and this is going to help reduce the national public debt for future generations sake and another thing about making your money work for you the foreign express trust is registered with the IRS on the zero file list which means it has zero tax liability including every business that it owns using entity reclassification therefore if the express trust is on the quick claim deed and also the utilities the trust can file all of the payments as a business loss and have those payments refunded dollar for dollar so for example let's say the express trust is on the quick claim deed and you are still paying mortgage payments if you have a home business or you are leasing a specific square footage to another person which is backed by a lease agreement then the lease payments which are collected and distributed to the mortgage or loan servicer can be claimed as a business loss for a refund as well by properly filing a 1041 this way the monies that are refunded to you can go towards next year's mortgage payments while the payments received by your tenant can be yours for other investments so essentially the IRS is paying for the house so if you did not go through the court selection and, and doing the discharge or mortgage release you can just utilize this method and use the refund money to pay the mortgage down every year the same money that you use to pay the mortgage you would claim for refund on the 1041 it gets refunded so it's rinse and repeat so the express trust offers many many advantages because it holds tax exemption legal status so now guaranteeing debt and entering into agreements with national associations is what adds to the national public debt and unfortunately causes inflation which hurts everyone to support a fractional reserve system whether it's utilizing personal or business credit we are devaluing the power of the dollar every day operating with negotiable instruments so we can avoid all of this by first having a conversation and creating a win-win situation for both the settler and buyer when it comes to buying a house so let's go back to our house that we found on Zillow and take the proper steps to buying with no money down and no credit okay so we have the house that we searched for which is the three hundred and forty five thousand dollar house in Orlando it looks good let's move on to step two let's say this is the neighborhood that we would like to live in and we search for the for sale by owner houses that has no representation by an agent or realtor and the owner is no longer living in the house they've already moved on to a new house now what does that tell you it doesn't mean that they're motivated to sell or they are desperate it just means they don't necessarily need the equity right now or proceeds 
from the sale to buy the next house. So let's look at it. We contact the homeowner and we get some information. They're asking 345. We looked at the comparables in the area, the top three with similar specs, and it's going for 359,000. That's the ARV after repair value. After talking to the seller, you determine that they got a couple of offers, and of course they're lower than what they're asking. The first one at 343 and the second one at 341. You're going to go ahead and say, well, I'll give you $347, $2,000 more than what they are asking. Why? To grab their attention, of course. Step three. Now, once you sit down with the seller, they will obviously ask you why you offered more. And this is when you present a question for them. They already moved on and they do not need the equity to purchase a new home. So simply ask, would you mind telling me? what you owe on this home and most people would not have a problem with telling you and let's say they owed a current mortgage of 220,000 they're asking 345,000 so that gives them an equity of hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in equity they would receive this immediately if you went and got a loan to cash them out their current payment Payment, interest, taxes, and insurance, it comes out to $1,250 per month. Now, a lot of times, if the $125,000 is not needed to buy another home, sometimes the seller does not have a plan for it, except to leave it sitting in the bank, or it may be for their offspring's college fund, or to reinvest in another piece of real estate property. It is very common where sellers use it for savings or college fund in a traditional credit union or bank at 1% interest. Now, according to our chart, it says at 125,000 equity at 1% interest, that is earning exactly equal to the monthly payment. That's what they would earn annually on 1% interest from the bank if they just left that money in the bank. And let's say in five years from now, they were going to use that money for a college fund or to reinvest into another piece of property that would add up to $6,250. So they would have a total of $131,250 at the end of five years, earning 1% by the bank. Okay, so what we do is simply offer them a higher rate of return on an investment by offering the sellers the opportunity to earn 7% on their equity opposed to 1% over 5 to 15 years. So banks and credit unions, they often loan money for mortgages. Now you loan them your money by making a deposit and they turn around and distribute those funds into vehicles such as Forex market, whole life insurance policies and loans with massive returns and pay you 1% while they keep the other 99%. This is what they do. So all we do is cut out the middleman here. One of the safest investments is a mortgage contract. By having a real estate attorney close what's called a wraparound mortgage. If you live in a mortgage state such as Florida or the attorney would close an all inclusive deed of trust if you live in a deed of trust state such as California or Nevada. The wraparound mortgage is simply taking the interest on the equity as a second mortgage and wrapping it around the existing one. Okay, so what does this look like? Let's go to step four. The existing mortgage is 220,000. PITI is 1250. If we offered them let's say 7% interest for 10 years on their 125,000 current equity. That's going to give them an additional $87,500. This will be in the form of a second mortgage, which wraps around the existing one. So that takes the existing mortgage of 220 and brings it to a total of 307,500 thousand dollars as the new mortgage they would receive 
interest only payments on that 87 grand at $729.16 per month. So the total payment for you would be $1,979.16. Done. That's an easy win-win. Easily. Simply by entering into a win-win conversation of creative financing. Now you can use a service company called escrow serve who can distribute the payments to the underlying mortgage company and the interest only payments to the seller automatically for just fifteen dollars per month so you just bought a house for three hundred and seven thousand five hundred dollars you're paying nineteen hundred per month escrow serve is taking twelve fifty to the existing mortgage and the 729 to the seller for their interest only payments. It's very simple. So by doing a wraparound mortgage or an AITD, all inclusive trustee, you've provided a security instrument to the seller, which is now an asset. Now let's say they did not move on to another house and they wanted to take advantage of this interest that you presented to them. Everyone would like to know how would they qualify for another house if the current loan is still on their credit report? Well, they would simply provide the wraparound mortgage that is recorded in the county to the bank after at least one year of seasoning. That means one year of you making those payments to them. And this shows the bank they have an income that washes out their outgoing. So their debt to income ratio is balanced to receive a new loan. So you offered 347,000 in the beginning, but you walked away with a 307,500 mortgage at $1,979.16 per month. And you know that this asset is going to appreciate. So, and the seller knows that if you default, they have the right to take back the mortgage take back the property that has increased in value over time and they can just put it back on the market and get their money right away if they want it to so it is in your best interest to do a deal this way and it's in their best interest to maximize on their equity now of course that three hundred and seven thousand five hundred thousand mortgage at nineteen hundred per month is for ten years and that's going to give you the benefit of debt pay down this original existing mortgage is going to be paid down it's also going to give you home ownership with no social security credit monetization or cash down and at the end of the ten years you simply write up another wrap on the current mortgage amount so the seller can keep receiving interest only payments until the principal is paid off I can assure you unless it is an emergency the seller will continue another wrap because nowhere else are they going to get a return on investment such as this now imagine if you did this with a multiplex where you lived in one unit and rented out the other three to four units the income from those units at market rent would pay for your obligation to the seller plus profit. You'd actually be living for free. And like I mentioned before, since you are collecting rent and paying a mortgage, it qualifies as a business expense for what? A refund. So now the documents that you need to accomplish this is of course a land trust to take title to the property if the house is located at it says uh, 123 1232 Creek Bottom Circle Orlando Florida then you will take title to the property in the name of 1232 Creek Bottom Trust leave it as that you want to have one land trust per property you do not want to have multiple properties in one land trust entity. Have one property for each trust. And you're going to also have an LOC or a corporation or a partnership that signs as the trustee on the document. This allows you to remain anonymous 
and prevents your property from being sold or liened in the event of a lawsuit or bankruptcy. The express trust, which is tax exempt, would be the beneficial owner of the trustee under entity reclassification. And that's going to remove property tax liability throughout the term of the wraparound mortgage. So in actuality, this payment will be a little bit less. Now, I briefly talked about other means of funding a trust besides just real estate assets with vehicles such as whole life insurance policies. The top three that I work with is Mass Mutual, Guardian, and Ohio National. Companies such as Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, or let's say Mercedes-Benz, they use whole life and infinite banking strategies to fund business plans and to secure high-level employees such as presidents and CEOs, which are used as the insured on the policy. That means the policy is taken out on the CEO's own social security number. Here's how it would work and how you would use that to your benefit. Let's say you're a business owner, and if you're not, you definitely want to start a business so you can take advantage of this. Under this whole life insurance policy, you have four basics. You have the premium, the cash value, the MEC or the non-MEC limit, which means this governs how much you can pay into the policy. And I recommend setting up a non-MEC limit so that you can determine a certain amount in the beginning and have the option to increase that as time goes on. And the fourth bucket is the death benefit. This is how much will be paid out upon the death of the insured. And it goes towards the beneficiaries. So let's say your premium is $260,000 per year. You have the ability to pull monies from your cash value. And this is the current paid up premium plus whatever uh, dividends that the insurance company is going to give you. Right now, we're at about 6%. So that means you have 6% added to this 260000 as cash value that you can pull and utilize as a withdrawal policy or a loan. Like I said, the MEC limit, you may increase the premiums as you go. And let's say at the end of the 60 years, that this life insurance policy has been in existence, you can now have access to 40 million that's paid out to the beneficiaries upon the death of the insured, such as the CEO or whoever. The type of business that you're doing, let's say, for example, this is an indie film production corporation named Animatrix Incorporated. Your CEO is Byron Allen. He is a top CEO of Comcast. And his wife, I'm not sure if she's still married to him, but let's say Jennifer Lucas is the secretary of Animatrix Incorporated. The shareholders of this corporation is owned 100% by the beneficiaries of the Express Trust, your Express Trust. Total revenue that you've earned per year with this business is 90 million. And, and the total business expenses plus the executive salary comes out to 30 million so the policy would be insured upon the ceo and secretary social security number not any members of the express trust and this avoids forfeiture of its natural person legal status whole life insurance is already a tax deferred vehicle and the express trust is a tax exempt entity and does not have to file 1041 tax returns, but it can, if it wishes, to get a return on the business expenses when filed as a loss. So the 30 million would be received in either whole or in parts from the IRS to the trust, which would be used to fund the annual premiums. While the business could use the built up cash value 
for whatever the business needs. So let's look up how cash value operates. And this is under Mass Mutual. Right here, access to cash value. A business owner who owns a whole life insurance policy can borrow against the accumulated cash value for a variety of purposes, including to help the business weather uncertain economic times, pay overhead expenses, or provide supplemental cash flow. I would definitely use this for retirement income. This entire method is called COLI. COLI stands for Corporate Ownership of Life Insurance. It refers to an insurance policy taken out by companies on their employees, typically senior level executives. The company is responsible for making the premium payments and if the person dies, the company, not the insured person's family or other heirs, receives the death benefit. It's the company that receives the death benefit. Such policies came to be called dead peasant insurance after some companies purchased life insurance on low level workers without their knowledge. I can assure you this still happens today. If you are an employee and not a CEO or a high executive in a company, you're employed as an employee by the employer, nine to five, regular job, and you are offered 401k, 403b, certain insurances, how do you think they are able to provide that for you? They are most assuredly taking out life insurance policies on you as the employee, considered to them as a low level worker and they're doing it without your knowledge. This is part of what's called the Effective Connected Income, ECI, that most employers are taking part in and they are benefiting from it financially. This is one of the reasons why, in my personal opinion, becoming your own self-sufficient business owner, self-employed, is highly recommended and very important to me because I do not want to be listed as a dead peasant just so that an employer can rake in the profits off of my labor 100 fold. That is unfair to me and that is the trials of Job and I take no part in that. So. That's it as a sneak peek on how to fund the trust with whole life and to use the money for business expenses, which can be refunded opposed to a write off. And that's also going to be it on this subject of buying a home with no banks, no credit and no cash down. If you need the land trust docs and wraparound mortgage documentation, join the Patreon page and I will get that to you. If you need a consultation on structuring these types of deals, call me at 689-244-0825. But remember, we always close these types of documents with a real estate attorney. And remember, if you're seeking tax exemption, whether you are a W-2 employee or a 1099 individual contractor, you can obtain tax exemption perpetually for you and your family, and most importantly, for the next generations. With that being said, I will see you in the next one.